Did you know that an apple core takes only three months to biodegrade, while a plastic carton takes at least 1,000 years to do the same? Imagine this. One day in the near future, humans will live in a world where all plastic waste will decay in a few days. In this world, humans will economize means to biologically break down our synthetic materials to reduce our ecological footprint. Problems such as the Great Pacific Gyre and massive landfills will cease to exist because we'll have biologically engineered microorganisms to clean our environment. To help you connect with this world, picture yourself sprinkling bacteria powder into your trash as you bring it out for the weekly pickup. Then three days later, when you come to look at your garbage can, you'll notice that the plastic waste has been broken down, eaten by these magical bacteria. Well, this is the world that Jeannie and I envisioned after we visited the Vancouver South Waste Transfer Station last summer and saw the shocking impact that plastic pollution has on our environment. We realized that in a sustainable world, humans must find some ways for us to break down our plastic uh, for us to sustain ourselves. Our journey began last November when Miranda and I drafted a research proposal to study the uh, degradation potentials of soil bacteria from our Fraser River estuary. I still remember sitting in a crowded Starbucks with Miranda for 10 hours straight, reading various academic papers and getting my head wrapped around scientific jargon like aromatics and esters. Well, the purpose of this is to enter into the Sanofi Biogenius Challenge Canada, a science competition that allows high school students like us to explore their career interests in biotechnology through working in real research labs. Having read uh, publications from worldwide research institutes on the degradation of um, fossil fuel uh, derivatives by river bacteria, we wondered what the Fraser River would have in stock for us. We were recommended to go to Dr. Lindsay Eltis at the UBC Departments of Microbiology and Immunology to seek his mentorship for a project. With the help of graduate students Adam Crow and James Round, we were able to carry out a series of experiments in Dr. Eltis's lab for four months, um, up to 10 to 20 hours a week. In December, we revised our proposal and decided to focus on phthalate degrading bacteria from the Fraser River estuary. These are chemical structures of phthalates. Phthalates are ubiquitous aromatic plasticizers found in er everyday products uh, that have high exposures to humans, such, such as babies' toys, food wraps, and cosmetics. Every year, we produce 400 million pounds of this plasticizer from petroleum and is really used in everything that we touch and we inhale. Phthalates are a problem because they easily leach into the environment and can be inhaled, ingested, and absorbed through the skin by humans. According to organizations such as the Environmental Protection Agency in 2006, phthalates have been classified as a carcinogen and a major estrogen mimetic. To understand the phthalate degrading abilities of bacteria, Miranda and I collected soil samples from along the Fraser River and enriched our culture with phthalate as the only carbon source. Then, through a series of re-inoculations and plating, we cultured bacteria that could solely survive on just these phthalates. Uh, to our surprise, we were able to isolate 14 strains from just two sites along the Fraser River. Then, um, we uh, chose three of these most efficient strings and carried out 16S rRNA gene amplification and sequencing. Uh, the purpose of this is to help identify our bacteria. We matched our data with um, nucleic acid blast, an online database um, that's comprehensive and finds regions of similarities uh, in biological sequences. So having finally discovered what our bacteria were, we wanted to verify that, uh, that they do have a pathway that allow phthalate degradation. So here um, is a section of a previously characterized phthalate degrading pathway leading to end products such as carbon dioxide, water, or fermentation products. Um, the structure in the box is an intermediate of phthalic acid. So what we did was that we extracted um, enzymes from our bacteria and combined them with this intermediate to trigger an enzymatic cleavage reaction. In other words, 
if we can find byproducts from this intermediate, we will be able to prove that our bacteria do have this daily degrading pathway. So on our last day at the lab, we assessed this experiment and uh, supported our hypothesis with spectrometry results. So what do our findings implicate? We believe that our findings in our research um, indicate, unveil the potential of using biologically engineered bacteria to solve our problem of plastic pollution in the environment. In April, we presented our findings to a panel of regional judges and won the first place in BC. Earlier this month, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, earlier this month, we represented BC and went to Ottawa to present our findings again at the National Research Council of Canada in Ottawa. And uh, our project was recognized to have the greatest commercial potential valued at $10 million. <laughs> <laughs> So in the next few weeks, Jeannie and I are planning to uh, have meetings with a few biotech industrialists in BC to discover, discover, uh, to discuss further next steps. Along this journey, we have not only discovered more about soil bacteria, but we have also learned more about ourselves. And we genuinely hope that in the future, the curiosity and commitment of many individuals in this world will help create a world where a plastic carton will be able to biodegrade as quickly as an apple core. Thank you. Yeah.